Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are going to be making something super exciting. Um, it's just a ironing board cover. I uh, recently got a, a new ironing board and I don't like the cover it came with. Uh, so that's why I am making my own. So let's just get into it. So here is my new ironing board. I got this second hand, so I don't know where um, this board originally came from, like uh, which store or, or where you can buy it. Um, but I think it's just a standard sized ironing board. Um, it measures to be 15 inches wide and about 54 inches long. Now, what I like about this ironing board is how the legs, there are four legs on it, so it does feel more uh, stable. There are ironing boards um, where the legs are the T leg design, and I, I don't like those ones because I feel that it's easier to just tip the, the board over. Although um, that T design, I think they design it that way so you can um, hang your ironing board when you're storing it. Here is the ironing board cover. It came with um, the outer part is 100% cotton and the padding part is uh, polyurethane and also uh, polyester fibers. So. I prefer my ironing board covers to just be a plain light neutral color and I think the inside padding part it should be I'd like it to be a natural um, fiber instead of a synthetic because uh, when you iron under high heat um, Synthetics, which I also think of as plastic, tends to melt. That has never happened to me before though, but um, you know, that's what happens when you heat up plastic. And um, if you have cotton padding, uh, natural fabrics seem to take heat a lot better. I think a lot of the ones you buy from the stores, they always use polyester padding, maybe because it's cheaper. So um, this is my first time making an ironing board cover too, so we're just go I'm just going to make this and see how it turns out. So I'm just going to talk about the materials uh, we will be using. Uh, this is a, a cotton canvas material. Um, it's just a, a scrap piece of fabric that I had. Um, so this will be the outer uh, fabric. Now for the padding, um, this is cotton batting used for quilts and I bought this one. Warm and plush luxury loft 100% natural cotton batting. I got this one um, from Fabricana and they did have a few other kinds of a cotton batting, um, but I chose this one because when I squish the, the batting together, it feels like there's still some padding in between my fingers, whereas the other ones, I, feel, I felt that the batting was not as dense, and when I squished down, I could, it just felt like it was paper, like there was nothing between my fingers after. And you know when you're ironing and you put pressure down? When the batting is not good, like it leaves these, these marks, these grill marks. Um, and, and over time, it can get really thin. So, so that's why you do need like a fairly dense cotton batting. Uh, this one was uh, $25 Canadian per yard. And I got one yard. I was going to get a bit more than one yard because, um, as I mentioned, my ironing board is a 15 inches wide and you still need some, a few inches on the, the ends to cover the side of the ironing board. So uh, I'll talk about that more later. So um, for my ironing board uh, padding, I am making it two layers of cotton uh, batting. Uh, oh yeah, I'm also lining the bottom part of um, 
the cover. So this one it's not lined, but for mine I will be lining it. And this is just a hundred percent. Actually, it's not a hundred percent cotton. It has some uh, stretch in here, but uh, this is a a cotton shirting material that I bought a long time ago and I never used. So we're we're just going to use it for this project. Um, yeah, I will be lining the bottom part of the cover and the reason why I will be doing that is to help prevent this sort of grilling. Now um, one more thing that I am using is this nylon very thin string here. This actually came with the original cover. I'm just reusing it and this part was part of the piping on the, the edge here. I just pulled it out so we can reuse it. I've already done some work here. As you can see, I've cut out um, the outer piece of the ironing board a cover. And how I did this is, um, okay, uh, just to uh, get this clear, this lengthwise um, part here, um, I cut this along the grain of the fabric. I uh, just laid the original cover flat um, over the, the fabric I'm using and I just stretched it out a little to make sure that um, I'm getting the right shape of the, the ironing board cover. Um, as you can see on the, the uh, seam allowance part, I did cut the cover a little larger than the actual um, original cover I had. I added about um, a quarter of an, an inch. So the reasoning for that is because when I took a close look at the edge of uh, this cover here, I can see that uh, the manufacturers actually surged the padding with the cover. And when you feed your fabric through the, the serger, there's that knife that cuts a bit of the, the seam allowance off. So to be safe, I added the um, extra quarter of an inch seam allowance so that part can be chopped off uh, when we start sewing or serging the edge. After cutting out the outer piece, I started working on the first layer of the padding. And the first layer has the same size as the original cover, but I did not add the um, extra quarter inch seam allowance. Um, so as you can see when it's laid flat, the first layer of the padding is a bit smaller than the, the outer piece. For the second layer, I made it the actual size of the board plus some extra length on the edge just so that it's enough to wrap around the sides of the board. So that extra length, it was about, uh, about an inch extra. Um, I did not make all the layers the same size um, like the, the first layer because otherwise uh, when I sew it all together it will just be too thick and bulky. I loosely hand sewed the two layers of padding together uh, just around the, the edge of the, the second layer and uh, one thing I'll note is that as I was uh, basting around the edges I did pull the second layer a bit or um, like I shrunk in the first layer into the second layer a bit um, because when we put the padding over the board the first layer takes up more surface area than the, the second layers. So the more layers we have on top of this ironing board um, the, the outer pieces will have to be larger in size uh, gradually because it takes up more surface area. So as I make my cover, um, I do apply this concept um, as I'm pinning all the pieces together and sewing it. So the, the outer pieces, it will be more bubbly than like the, the lining piece. <laughs> So 
um, we're just preparing uh, all the pieces so we can uh, start sewing it all together. And uh, the first layer is the outer piece. And then I lay the, the two layers of the padding. And then I put the lining on top. I'm just going to show you how I'm uh, pinning this. So um, as I mentioned previously, uh, these two pieces, the lining and the outer, are the same size. I'm just going to pin it so that this batting is sitting um, a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So it's, it's going to be like pinned like this. And I'm just going to do that all around. So now I will be just sewing or abasting uh, on the, the edge here a one centimeter seam allowance. I just want to make sure that I am sewing um, all three layers together. I'm just going to just trim this extra long part of the lining off and then I'm just going to prepare uh, to serge the, the edge of the cover. I just finished serging the edge of the cover and I've laid it out on top of my ironing board. So I'm just going to show you uh, what it looks like when I have it laid out. For the length of the board, um, if I just stretch it out, there is still um, some cover at the ends here. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is sew a bias tape around the, the edge here and while I sew that, I'm also going to be putting this uh, nylon string uh, in that, that bias tape and just sew it all around. Before we sew on the bias tape, um, what we're going to do is just determine where we want to put the opening for where we can tighten the string. So um, on the original cover, the opening part was actually on the tip of the, you know, the triangle part. So I'm going to just do the exact same thing with mine. The edge of my bias tape, it's not going to be flush against the edge here because, um, you know, we want, this bias tape is one centimeter wide, so we want to just make sure it wraps around the, the raw edge like, like this, okay. So when I'm sewing this first part, um, we'll start like right here. Uh, 
this is what it looks like after I uh, sew on one side of the bias tape. So now I'm going to be sewing in the, uh, the string. Um, and this will pretty much be the last step. So, so I'm just going to leave this like here. And I'm going to wrap this um, tape around. Fold it over like that. And then this string, it's just going to hang loose in this uh, casing. And then I'm just going to go a uh, stitch right along here and just go all around. I'm sewing the ironing board cover and I am very pleased with how it turned out. Um, I do think that the two layers of the cotton quilt batting um, was the perfect amount of thickness for the cover. Um, I do think I could have gone with uh, three layers but the top part would have been a bit too poofy. Um, yeah, so, you know, I can still add another layer. Um, I could just cut the exact shape of the board and just slide it right on top of this wire mesh and then just put this cover on top of it. So, you know, I still can do that, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is right now. Um, I also do think it was a really good idea that I added this cotton lining uh, in between the uh, the wire mesh and the, the padding because when you're ironing with a uh, high heat on the, uh, the board, it really does push the padding into the, the wire mesh and leaves those indents and those grill marks. And I think that just makes the cover not last as long. So when I have this cotton lining in between, I can already tell that that will help prevent that's a grill mark from, from happening. At the end of the day, um, making this cover, it did cost about the same as buying a new cover, but I do think that the material used, because it's, you know, it's all cotton, um, you know, it was worth it making my own cover, and I really liked this plain organic look or, or color to this cover. So now when you see um, the ironing in my future videos, I think it will just be more clear for you guys to see, you know, what I'm doing behind this plain background. Yeah, so, you know, I hope this video was helpful to you in some way, and um, thank you for watching. One thing I just wanted to show you is, you see how this white cotton lining is bunching here? So that's why earlier I was saying I was like pulling the, the lining parts so that it would be a little smaller um, on the inside because when this thing wraps around there's all this uh, like bunching so even though I, I did pull it out a bit um, I think I could have pulled it out a bit more but you know what it's not a big deal um, that part's just optional 